Welcome, brothers and sisters in brew, to Casa de Tim of Brew Bros. Hopefully you're here because you've bought one of these. Uh, this is a brewery in a box kit version of our tried and tested Doombar clone. Doombar is a very popular amber ale originating in Cornwall and named after a treacherous sandbank at the mouth of the River Camel just across from Padstow. The beer isn't actually brewed in Cornwall anymore because Sharp's Brewery was taken over by the machine that is Molson Coors, but that's another story. Sharps are very secretive about the recipe, obviously, but if you follow our instructions and this video closely, you will brew a beer on your own, in your kitchen, that is very close to the genuine article. Let's see what secrets are to be found in the box. So we have our mini keg here, five litres. We have a stopper, a bung and an airlock, uh, some sanitizer and some yeast, a rubber band, hops one, hops two, our malt mix, uh, a brewing net, some dextrose, a beer mat, a nice little postcard featuring the bald Brad Pitt over there on the left, and some other geezer, and uh, some instructions, and of course the thermometer. So before we dive in, sports fans, just a few points. One, please sub immediately to keep up with all our awesome brewing content. Uh, two, ask any questions you like in the comments below. Ed and I are very happy to help you out. And three, hit it. If your pot doesn't have volume markings, use a measuring jug to put five and a half litres and then four and a half litres in your pot so you can then measure from the water line to the top or you can just mark a wooden stick like a skewer or similar. Fit your grey net and tighten. Heat four litres of water to 68 degrees and the mash has been launched. Mashing is all about maintaining a constant temperature. The closer you can keep the temperature between 62 to 66 degrees, the better. This mix is mainly pale malt with a small amount of crystal and roasted barley to give it the dark amber colour. You'll need to keep adding and removing your pot from the heat. After 80 minutes, raise the temp to 75 degrees for 10 minutes and stir continuously for what's called mashing out. This stops the conversion of starches to fermentable sugar. Then start heating 3.5 litres of water in your second pot to 75 degrees. Now we come to the stage called sparging, but first, we need to separate the grain from our liquid, which we now call wort. An elastic band helps, which is why we've included one. Gradually raise the net out of the wort. Then sparge away. Gently rinse the grain with your sparge water to extract the last of the grainy goodness. Well, they're sparging, baby. We want a total of six litres after sparging. The spent grain can be used to make bread. It's kind of gone bonkers in the oven. <coughs> this part is easy. Just heat the wort until you get a nice gentle boil and hold it there for 90 minutes. Crank up that heat. The hops you have are North Down, Perla and Northern Brewer. The contents of Hops 1 go in at the start. We want 4.5 litres or just over in our pot at the end of the boil. If you have less, just top up with a little bit of water. A few minutes later. Hops 2 go in at the end of the boil and need to be left off the heat for 30 minutes. Mix your sanitizer in a bottle and second sink or large bowl with two to three liters of warm water. As you can see, I've cleaned the net, funnel, airlock and bungs and now I'm soaking them in the sanitising solution. Get your sink ready with some ice and water.
Then place your pot in the sink. Chill your wort down to 21 degrees. I stir up a whirlpool for a minute or so because it chills quicker and collects the sediment in the centre. From this point on, sanitising is really important. Once you start chilling the beer, just make sure that anything which comes into contact with it is rinsed or soaked in sanitizer. You can see my thermometer here in the sanitising solution. Clean your keg and then rinse it out with sanitizer. Then place the funnel in the keg with your net over the top. I like to double up the net so it keeps as much sediment out as possible. Then with your wort at 21 degrees, pour away. The more you pour, the cloudier it gets, so you may need to encourage it through the net with a sanitised spoon. Discard the worst of the sediment. Now it's time to pitch the yeast. Give it a shake to aerate the wort and get the yeast partying. Fit the airlock in the sanitised bung before you place it in the keg, or you might lose the bung inside which will ruin your day, and you can trust me on this, I speak from experience. Half fill your airlock with sanitizer, and that's the brew day over. Twenty four hours later. Two weeks later. Remove your airlock and bung. Pour in the dextrose. Fit your stopper firmly and then keep the keg in a quiet place for two more weeks. Two weeks later. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two to three days before the end of the two weeks, put your keg in the fridge so it can cold crash. This will not only chill your beer, it will also help to make it clearer by making the sediment fall to the bottom. Just look at that, looking great, eh? How's it going team? So we're uh, four weeks later, or just over four weeks later since I brewed. That's two weeks fermenting, two weeks carbonating in the keg. And uh, we're ready to try the flavour sensation, which is our clone kit of Doomba. Excited? Um, yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? Had a little sniff, didn't we, as it, as it came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Sm it smells Can you that? It smells fruity. You can pass it yeah, through. no, no, I'm good, I'm good. Thank you. Should we get in there? Yeah, go for it. I mean, it looks great, doesn't it? Great Ching colour. Chinkui. <laughs> Shut up. Please. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Oh, we're going for the sniff first. Yeah, I almost went straight in. Smells nice. Yeah, yeah nothing fruity. Nothing nasty about that at all. No off flavours. No. Nope. Smells really. It does smell fruity, doesn't it? It does. It does. It smells good. We going in? Yeah, yeah. It's going in. straight. We don't hang about. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that's another winner. It's a winner. I've done it again, son. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm really happy with that. I mean, that that that's that's very close to Doomba, mm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That is lovely. As that's I said at the beginning, really Doomba, um, I mean, Rochard's Brewery haven't published their actual recipe, funnily enough. Um, so it's it, it's a, it's a bit of guesswork, really, plus little snippets of of, of mm. what they've revealed about it. But I think that's pretty close. Yeah, it's a closely kept secret, isn't it? Mm. There are a few variations online, isn't it? But yeah, yeah. That is really close. It's fruity as well. And what did you ferment it at? Uh, what temperature? Mm. Um, well, it was in the airing cupboard, so... It's like 2022 ish Yeah, 2022, but in our house it's a bit cold, so it probably dipped down to maybe 18, 19 on yeah. some days. It's been quite cold in the UK throughout uh, fermentation. Yeah. Um, but what I'm going to try next time, as it says in the tips, is to ferment for the first four or five days at 25 degrees, if possible, just mm. to bring out those fruity flavours. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going I'm to do a rebrew in a few months' time, which will be on the channel. 
I'll do a rebrew and then we'll just we'll just compare them to see how how much fruitier that is. Yeah. I might I might be able to, to to maybe bottle some and then. That's that's exactly everything you'd expect though. I mean, bear in mind they don't release their recipe. That's mm. a really good version of it. I mean, that's yeah, got yeah. to be. I mean, to me, it's kind of spot on. Hmm. I'll take that. So um, very well. We're going to enjoy a little Doom Bar session, a Doom Bar clone session. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the kit and hope you have some success as well. Um, hit us up in the, in, the, in the comments, let us know how you got on. Maybe even put a photo on our Facebook page. Mm. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, take care. We'll see you guys soon.